So I'll answer the question straight out the gate. Yes, absolutely, it does work. I was floored to see how well it worked, especially with these speed tests. Now, Highboost did send this for review, but no additional funds were exchanged. We definitely keep it unbiased as always. And so, yeah, that I didn't really care if it worked or didn't work, because if it didn't work, I just box it up and send it back to him, right? Well, it stayed installed because of how well it worked at this family member's house. And yep, let's get to it. So this is the Highboost 10K, supposedly like 10,000 square feet. The home we're installing this in is like, I think around 4,000 square feet. But the way this works for boosting your cell phone, because the problem they have here is there's no cell phone signal inside the house. It's like very minimal. Now you have no problem with phone calls outside. And so the way this does work is you have this Yagi style antenna directional and you point it towards the nearest cell phone tower. And then there's this long coax cable, you know, running it out, outside to inside the home. And then there is the repeater booster amp, whatever you want to call it. Has a little screen, which we'll get into. And then because of the size of the home, there is another piece of coax that goes to another antenna on the other side of the house. That way you can kind of get that roaming thing for inside the home. So I'm kind of excited to see if this works. I've been skeptical about these before, so we'll see how well this does and whether it works or does not work. So I'm gonna go around and take some signal readings inside the home using like Cell Mapper or Signal Check Pro just to see what we had before and then what we can get afterwards with this repeater. So we got the cellular box installed and the Screen we're showing, this is the main band we're trying to get in this area is the LTE 700. It looks like we're getting a four for the power, which is pretty good. And I'm just leaving everything as default, like the manual says. I'm gonna end up installing it in the top of this cabinet, just probably putting it on the shelf and kind of pointing it towards the kitchen. The other wire runs to the other antenna in the living room across the house. With this unit, there's actually two indoor antennas and it works out perfect for the house being an L shape. We use this vaulted area to point the signal towards the master bedroom in one of the bedrooms. And then the repeater itself has the other directional antenna in the face of it. And that's what's pointed towards the kitchen, the living room and the other bedrooms. So for the Yagi antenna outside that picks up the cell phone tower itself, we actually mounted it on this conduit and um, just got it pointed up at an angle just to catch on the tower and get the best signal. We're able to reuse the mount off of that conduit so we didn't have to screw into the mason area or whatever. And then we used the existing junction they had over here to run the coax up into the attic. So even with the cell booster on, I'm actually, you can see we're actually getting 5G 850 plus 1900 megahertz. Well, it just dropped, probably not using any data. But yeah, we weren't seeing that before, especially inside the home. So with the cell booster on, you can see we're actually getting 5G, pulling almost 50 megabits on the download and pushing almost 10 on the upload, which seems about normal, which is actually kind of funny. You don't get these speeds outside the home. Let me go ahead and pull the booster and show you that what the signal is like without the booster and what the speed test looks like. So I'm not even picking up 5G, it's just picking up the band 14. So we're gonna try another speed test without the booster, not even picking up 5G this time around. You can see it's taking a while to pull. If it's gonna even pull. Yeah, so we're getting one to two, three, four, four, five, meg well, not even less than five megabit. So it's purely just on LTE, not even seeing 5G, and it is getting some disruptions. Uploads probably gonna be a whole lot slower just because the nature of the beast there, if it even will pass the upload test. Yeah, that's like totally unusable. 0 0.02 upload without the booster. So let's plug it back in and see what happens. And immediately plugging the booster back in, you can see it picks up 850, picks up 1900, and will pick up also 5G. So I'm gonna check it on also on a Verizon phone. This is FirstNet AT&T, just to see the difference before and after. So this is Verizon. We're picking up minus 88 on the booster. Pretty damn strong there, maybe minus 90. It's a big difference on Verizon. You can see it drops to like minus 115, minus 117. Not a great signal at all. That's with the booster unplugged. 
Then you can see instantly we plug the booster back in, it drops back to that minus 90 signal that's usable inside the house. So that leads us to would you buy one? And before you click off, there is a 20% off coupon. I don't know how long that lasts. It's just what they sent to me in the email. So definitely try it out because yeah, that's a good percentage, especially with some of the cost of these boosters. And leading to that, which one should you get? Unfortunately, I was only able to test this one in this situation, but definitely look at the ones, all the different models out there for your particular install size that you have. And yeah, I would always go with bigger than what you need because you can always turn things down. You can't go the other way. Now, would I buy one of these? Absolutely. I'm actually thinking of another situation where they just have crap cell phone signal inside the home. That's a very common occurrence, especially in rural areas. And what is that situation? Well, let's jump to a coverage map. And of course, I'm going to get into some more of the geeky side of the install and the bands. So if you want to hang out for that, if not, just, you know, shoot me a comment down below. Give me a thanks or whatever and head on your merry way. So what is this exactly? This is actually called coveragemap.com. Pretty simple to remember. If not, you can remember and you know, grab the link down below. They actually get really cool coverage from actually FCC documents. Now, I'm checking out AT&T LTE. I would not worry about 5G with these boosters because, and I'll get to some of the talk of the bands when I go over the description. Just let's focus on LTE. Now, we don't have good coverage for T-Mobile in the area we were at, so we were just sticking the homeowner actually was majority AT&T with some guest of Verizon. So basically, this is a situation they're in, and this map's really easy to read. You can actually see on the actual different cell phone towers, most cell towers will have three sectors, and it's basically going to have an alpha, beta, and gamma sector where it's going to shoot signal for like 90 degrees or 120, depends on what they chose for the area, so it's, it's three sections. So you can actually see that this one is actually probably a sector shoots this way, one shoots this way, and then one shoots down this highway. There actually is a lot of engineering that goes into the RF side of cell towers. The problem happens where you get crap signal is this homeowner actually lives in this area. You can see the exact problem they have is they're like evenly spaced in between this tower, this tower, this tower, and this tower. Well, that kind of sucks because as soon as you go inside, the phone doesn't know which one to use. And then when you're hitting the brick walls and everything else that's metal, insulation, it just kills the signal. And you know the deal. Hey, let me go outside to take this phone call. Well, that's no more with the booster. So if you have zero signal that's going to happen outside, of course, the booster is not going to work. You can't boost a nothing signal. So you have to be able to have usable signal outside. You really can't do this with ease with the actual iPhones that is so much easier in Android because of the way they actually have the APIs open for you to see the towers you want. So what I actually did is, is I went to this tower here and this tower here and found out the actual sector IDs. They call them like the GCIs, it's the tower ID and then went to the homeowner's location and stood out which one is the strongest for the area. And what you're trying to do is find out which one is designed for the coverage of that home. Because if this tower is not pointing actually at this location, it kind of is stupid for you to point your antenna there. So you really need to point to the tower that's designed to cover that area. That just happened to be this tower here. Now, another way to find that is a really awesome tool is Cell Mapper because it's a crowdsource situation and it happens from Android phones, iPhone users. You can't participate. Unfortunately, that's a whole Apple thing. They have it all locked out. Now, the way this does, if I have my phone with Cell Mapper running and I run up this highway, I'm actually dumping information into this map. So it's all crowdsourced and you can actually see the tower IDs. So I can tell that this is on AT&T and it has all the different bands. Here's the tower ID, et cetera. And then you can also see it's green. Someone located it, meaning that 
someone went through the painstaking task of actually dropping the pins actually on the towers. And the cool part is you'll notice if I slide this over, you can actually see what I just talked about, the different sectors and then also the different sectors of each band that the band is a frequency. So we can actually see this sector here is tilted a little towards that homeowner's location, which was perfect. That's why I chose this one and I pointed at that actual tower. Now, the real geek thing of like, because it throws you off of like, which exact tower do you point at? Where is it at in the home? Is I actually just pulled up Google Maps. It zoomed in on this actual satellite location and found the actual tower. You can actually see it's right here. And then I went ahead and just marked a location to draw the distance. So just hit, clicked on this and said, measure distance. And that gives you the little dot. And then I went and put it on the actual home. So this isn't the actual home, but to give you an idea is I just would click here and now I can actually see, say for instance, that I'm putting it on the corner of this home right here. Then I would know to point my antenna towards the corner of this pond. Makes it pretty simple. It gives you a visual you know, representation of like, where should I point this thing at? And then once you have all the wires run, the cool part is you can actually go ahead and add the app. They have an app for this model and you add it to your Wi-Fi and then it always will report the actual signal of each band. And then you can fine tune, hey, I wanna go to a little left, go a little right, or go up and down, see where your best signal is at and dial the sucker in. And it works pretty damn well. It's pretty awesome for the install. Now, if you really get hung up and you need some help on an area, I might be able to help. Um, you can find the link for my Discord down below. It's just discord.digiblur.com, or you can just go search for Digiblur DIY in the Discord searches chat room. You can come jump in and ask for some help. Now, the, the layout of this one, what it can and what it cannot do, and remember I talked about is the square footage. I really wish that this secondary antenna here had a longer coax cable. That was one thing I wish I could have get further over in the home. It does say 6,000 to 12,000 square feet. I'm gonna say this was a house that was 4,000 square feet and it probably did perfect. So it's like with typical marketing, just think about that, that they probably exaggerate things a good bit. Now, what all does it cover? What carriers does it cover? Is you can see right here, it covers band 12, 17, 13, 5, 25. What does all that mean, Travis? It's all going to be different based on each carrier. Is this going to do 5G for me? Um, probably not. Depends on the carrier and what they're doing in the area. It's not going to do like your 5G ultra wide, your 5G plus, and um, I think they call it 5G UC. I, they got so many different acronym names for the actual mid band and high band wideband, whatever it is, may be called for 5G that Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T are doing. Those are going to be like your C-band stuff, like your band 77s, your band 41s. Those are like your super crazy speeds, like you get like a gig down. This The repeater is not going to do anything with those. Where this is going to help out is those lower band stuff that would help out for phone calls and then some of your LTE stuff. Now, we did get band 5 5G off of AT&T. That's great. In the area we're in, AT&T is not running 5G on anything else except for band 77, which this does not cover. So that's where it comes in with that 5G compatible. So I know we've kind of gone over a lot of things, but hopefully you've been able to find some of the tools. I'll leave the links down below. Um, definitely hit up Cell Mapper and then also hit up the Coverage Map website. I really, really love this website. It shows you the true coverage of things. You can actually see we hit T-Mobile. It just was not great in this area at all. Um, even though we're trying to point at a tower is way south of where we were trying to point at, so it didn't pick up much. This is awesome website. It's got Verizon. It's got the 5G stuff. You can see Verizon really doesn't have 5G. Uh, AT&T does. 
it just gives you everything right at your fingertips. It's pretty awesome. And of course, you can find all the links to all these tools, all the products, everything down below. I do appreciate it. And we definitely couldn't do it without you. Thanks for watching. And this was a pretty awesome install. Looking forward to doing another one. Maybe we'll cover that one as well. Y'all do the drill. Press all them buttons down there and y'all take care.